This morning, I want us to turn to John, verse 20, uh, chapter 20, verse 24. John, chapter 20, verse 24. And it reads, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand in his side, I will not believe. After eight days again, his disciples were with him, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, yet believe. This passage is always referred as a doubting Thomas, that Thomas was a doubter, that he would not believe unless he saw things. Well, with us, sometimes we have the problem. If we don't see something happening, we don't believe, or it is a sick. What doubt is, is Doubt is in the middle of unbelief and belief. Mm. It's right in the center. Mm. You might believe, but then unbelief is trying to come in as a form of doubt. And what is doubt? What is doubt? Doubt is an uncertainty or a lack of conviction. Mm, no. Doubt is uncertainty or a lack of conviction. That you believe, but then you get this doubt that comes that, wait, well, maybe it's not that way. Maybe it's not that way at all. And so you get this doubt that comes into your mind that just wants to play with your emotions. Mm, my, my, my. Wants to play with your my. will. Just wants to play with mm. your mind. Mm. It's wanting to put confusion in your mind. That well, they say seeing is believing. Mm. Well, there are sometimes people see things and they don't really believe either. Mm. You know, I can remember back in high school and I've related this before. In my American province class, I was a senior, and it was all seniors in it. And my coach that taught it told me, Skip, I want you to come in five minutes late. Five minutes late. And when you get into the room, I want you to pick a fight with another student. And of course, this guy was probably the toughest kid in school, and I was just a little bitty wimp, even though I was a wrestler and everything. I came into the room, and I walked in, and they were all sitting in a semicircle, and I threw my books on the floor, and I ran, walked up to him, and took him by the collar, and pulled him out of the desk, and threw him on the floor, and we start wrestling all over the floor and just, just good getting after it. And they broke us up. 
And they sat us down. And then the teacher says, I want you to sit down and write down what you saw. A lot of people saw different things. And a lot of them couldn't believe that me come in and just pick a fight with probably the, one of the toughest kids in school. But they all saw things differently. They all seen things differently. See, that's just what's sometimes that's what put doubt in our mind. Of course, there are some people say, oh, I knew it was fate, but Skip would never pick on Bud anyway. You know, he's not that type. But, you know, it was the thing, and then there's some of them says, that just scared me to death, you know, they just, and, and then the, the count of the 30 students in there was so different to each person's their reaction. And that's the way sometimes we, when we see things, even though we see things, sometimes we get that doubt creeping into our lives. Mm. Even by sight, sometimes we see things differently. Mm. Now, Jesus said to Thomas at that time, it says, Thomas, because you have seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have seen, but yet not believed. Otherwise, what we need to understand is to get rid of doubt, we have to believe. And we have to believe without uncertainty. Mm -hmm. But in, earlier I said that when we believe something, we have to have conviction that we truly believe it. We truly believe it. No matter, no shadow of a doubt, mm -hmm. we believe. And that we get past just believing that we know and know in our heart it's real. Well, belief, we believe with our heart, not by sight. Because that's the reason why some people say, well, I can't believe because all the evil in the world and all they are focusing on the things of this world that are evil. And they, their focus are not with that hope. Mm. So, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. To walk by faith and not by sight. And what we have to say is that to walk <coughs> in the scriptures mean we live. Oh, well. We live it. We act and we conduct ourselves in a certain way. So when we walk, is that we cannot walk in doubt, we have to walk in belief. We walk in certainty, not of uncertainty. We, and our conduct should be under conviction of what we really believe. What we really are so convicted that the truth is there. The truth is there and we walk with that conviction. No matter what the circumstances that as we're walking through this earth, no matter what it is that we have to walk with conviction that we are true believers. That we what God said not that we believe it, we have to say we know it's true. You know, you know those saying God said it, I believe, and that settles it. No, it's already settled in heaven. And that's where our belief has to come, is that we understand it is settled in heaven. And we learn. Now, he mentioned here that, you know, he told Thomas that you believe because you've seen. But there are people that will have not seen, but then they still will believe. And that's the way we are right now. We have not seen Jesus. We have not seen him. But we have the faith in him. And because of our faith, we believe. Now, Hebrews 11.1, 1, which is the definition of faith, that we say that now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, if we look at that, that faith 
overpowers doubt. The strength of our faith overpowers doubt. Faith overpowers the uncertainty in life. Faith overpowers complacency in life. Our faith needs to be activated. It needs to be where we can go. It is a lifestyle. But we see that it says things that are hoped for and things are not seen. Well, let's think about this as born-again Christians and we look at Romans 8.24. Look at Romans 8.24. It says, for we are saved by hope. But hope is seen, is not hope. For a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Mm. So what is what we're saying? That we come to Jesus and we're saved in the hope which is faith. Mm. And so we don't really see Jesus like Thomas said that well I won't not believe until I put my fingers in an elephant and my hand in his side. But see, it's hope that is exercised. <coughs> and see, why do we say that we have hope in the salvation of God, which hope is joy with confident expectations and that joy is the joy of our salvation but then we walk around in doubt and we can hope by our faith that Jesus is our Lord and Savior then why can't we hope for things that are there for us See, we can exercise our hope in our salvation, but when things are not going well, we get into doubt and we get into uncertainty and we lose our conviction. So we have to understand, we cannot keep walking by sight. We got to keep that blessed hope, which is faith, that gets rid of all doubts. So we understand that. To walk by faith is to live confident. I think this is the problem is lots of people have lost their confidence because they do not see things happening right now. Mm -hmm. And because they do not see things, they lose their confidence. Yeah. And so we have to understand that hope is our confident expectations of something better. That is our faith. And we've got to exercise our faith. We have to see that we have, believe, we have to believe in the unseen realities of life. Those promises of God that he has said that are for us. That we might not see them right now. And we got to get over this thing about doubting that, well, God, I know that you said it and the promises are there. But because I'm not seeing it, I've lost my hope. No, no. And you go into hopelessness and then mm. you say your faith is weak. But what happens when you get in this hopelessness? That's when the devil and Satan and all of his imps that are able to attack us even more because we've let down that shield of faith. And so we have to look at things and say, I, I have hope in my salvation, so I also have to have hope in my, mm, my uncertainties. Of things I have not seen. Mm. I might have to suffer a little while. I might have to go through things. But at the end. My faith. It will be exercised. 
I will get rid of the doubts. 2 Corinthians 4.18 While we look not at things which are seen, but things which are not seen. For things which are seen are temporal, but things which are not seen are external. Too many times that we exercise what we believe in God is what we see. And we look at too many times of uncertainties as the way the things are. We look at what is surrounding us is the way God really is. But he wants us to exercise our faith have that hope. Have that hope that things that we don't see, that in the end, it's all going to come out. Because all these other things are just temporal, are just temporary. Our afflictions are light afflictions. They're early momentary. What we're going through, it can be any part of our life, you might be going through a financial struggle or you might be going a relationship struggle or you just might be going through a health struggle. But in the whole scheme of things, that's just temporary. But God has promised us in all those areas blessed hope. And we have to get to the point in our life that we exercise our faith and we walk not in the seen world but in the unseen world that guide us through the Holy Spirit that he sent here for us to be have a comforter. So we see that things are temporal but you know it's the external that the eternal things that matter. But he also wants as long as we're having this body That he will quicken our spirit. That we can exercise our faith. Things that seem overwhelming to us. If we learn to trust in him. And trust in his promises. Literally trust him. And get rid of those doubts. Too many times people get that wilderness, wilderness mentality. Well, things are just never going to get any better. And we have to watch with our mouth what we say. Watch what our mouth says. Because when we say the things that they're not going to get better, that is opening a gateway to put more doubt in us. No. Put in a gateway that mm -hmm. sin can come into our life. That, you know, it gets uncertainty in our life. And it takes away our, our, our conviction of what we've been called. So we have to understand. We get, if we exercise our faith in the eternal and not in the temporary, but what God has said in his scriptures, that he will bless us and he will pour out his blessings that because of our faith, faith is what moves God. Yeah. It's not your circumstance. It's your, it's your faith that moves God. So to overcome doubt in our life, we exercise our faith. And you know what happens? The things that we do not see all of a sudden come about and we see them. That he'll come and manifest his glory, manifest his promises to us because we're walking in faith, not by sight. That we're walking in total trust in him. That we are believing with our whole heart. Not just part of the heart that lets doubt to come in. 
So we see that are we going to be doubting Thomas? If we don't see it, we're not going to believe it. Are we going to be the faith walkers? That we have faith. Even though I don't see it, Lord, my faith is so strong, I believe it so much, it's going to come about. And we got to get out of the doubt. As I said before, we always need to doubt the doubts. When things come in and you have a financial problem or you have a relationship problem, you start speaking negative. And all that does is just make things come about. Because death, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And when we start speaking doubt, guess what? It happens. But if we start speaking faith, no matter what, and get rid of the doubts and keep speaking faith, even though we don't see it, one day it'll manifest and you say, wow. Because I exercise my faith. And I believe it. We have to watch. Don't let doubt comes in. To take us, we believe, but that doubt kind of makes us move over to unbelief. So we need to exercise our faith to get rid of doubt. Even if we don't see it, even if it's not manifesting right now, you keep that faith, you keep that faith, you keep that faith, you keep that faith. What did I say? You keep that faith. And you keep that faith. You believe in your healing. You believe in your relationships. You believe in your financial status. You believe God and trust God in all circumstances. Even the temporal things. That knowing that there are light afflictions and he's going to get us through it. So what I'm saying is that we need to go beyond doubt. Beyond doubt to faith. And then we are able to deal with uncertainty. And we'll get a total conviction what God said is real. And it becomes the reality of Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you right now. Father, we know Thomas doubted, but we're no different than him. And Father, help us that when doubt comes in our minds, is that when we exercise our faith, the total belief, the total knowing, that you will get us through no matter what it is. Father, help us not to walk by sight. Let's walk with the promises and the hope, which is joy with confident expectation. And Father, I speak joy in people's life today. Father, restore joy into their life. Father, resurrect them out of the life of doubt, the life of belief, the light of hope. Father, we ask this all in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen.